Hello, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me, everyone. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour here. And we typically work on projects uh, from beginning to end. So thanks, uh, thanks guys popping in here and thank you replay viewers for watching as well. Uh, uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here and it's normally here on Facebook on the Penguin and Fish page. So thank you for joining me. So tonight we are going to continue on the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along and we're going to try the quilt as you go technique for this project. And uh, tonight we're gonna do some free motion quilting. So let me show you what we got. So here are, here are four of my blocks sewn together and we have sandwiched them uh, in to the quilt already. So we have it pinned to our batting and to the backing fabric. So it's like a little mini quilt right now. So we're going to quilt this tonight and we also have another one. So we have two ready to go, basically two mini quilts, and we will uh, stitch these up as far as we can this week, and then we will do the quilt as you go technique, which hooks them all together. And my mom and dad are in town, so mom saved me. She brought me a bolt of this this yellow fabric because I only had one more fat quarter. I had uh, I thought I had a whole bolt, but I didn't. So she she had some. So she saved my back of my quilt, <laughs> but she also brought in uh, her quilt so far. So I wanted to show you that and we can talk about it a little bit. So she is basically doing the same thing. She's sewing four blocks together, uh, like what, what we have here. And then she's doing the quilt as you go technique to sew those finished quilted blocks together. And the nice thing, the whole idea with quilt as you go is that you know, as the name says, you're doing the quilting in little bits as you make the quilt versus waiting until the end and then quilting a whole big gigantic quilt. So the beauty of it is that instead of dragging a whole quilt all over, I just get these little mini sample quilts that I quilt. And then they all get sewn together. So here's, here's my mom's so far. She has like a good top row going. So she didn't put the sashing in the middle of her blocks, she just sewed the blocks together. But she used the quilt as you go technique to sew them, sew them together. So I'll show you that a little closer when I flip around, but look how far her quilt is! Isn't it crazy? It's so cute. So she's doing black and white, uh, and then it has a little bit of um, a little bit of blue and green popping, popping in there every once in a while. And then the back she's doing all white, like a neat all white quilted back. So you can kind of see that in the light there, all the fun, pretty quilting that she's doing. But yeah, and I will kind of show you, I'll show you a little bit more. I'm not gonna show you the actual quilt as you go technique tonight because we need two finished quilted blocks first. We're at that stage, but I can show you with my mom's kind of what the process is going to, going to be. And uh, she had, um, some uh, thoughts on it too that she wanted me to share so I'll, I'll tell you that as well so um, uh, like little hiccups that you know may, will maybe help us along the way here since she's a little further than we are so all right I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going here tonight we'll take a look at that a little bit closer all right so I got the machine all prepped for some free motion quilting look here's the back of back of my mom some of the stuff that she's doing Oh, but before we get too far, I wanted to show you my doily. I, I promised on Friday that I'd show you my doily progress. So here it is. I have, I think, two more colors to go. But last time I showed you, I think I was only this far. But now I got all of, um, I got a couple more of these little pineapples going. And ultimately, I'm going to starch this. So I will, I'll starch this with you guys online, but once it's all starched and I and I um, block it, it will get stretched way out. So it'll be more more like this. So right now I've used I'm I'm using that sulky that sulky 12 weight thread. You can use your Orofil 12 weight. This is just 12 weight 
thread that I'm crocheting. And uh, it comes in these little spools for from Sulky. And I've used, I think this is my sixth spool. So it goes here is a color. The next color goes to here, then here, then here, then here, then here. So it, it kind of blends together. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you guys as well. Because um, I said I would. But yeah, I'm. Uh, this is what I do in the evenings. I watch TV and I, I crochet more little rows, rows on, on this feller. But there, there you can see the color shift a little bit more on the sixth color right now. Yeah, alrighty. Back to the quilt as you go. <laughs> Little mini show and tell. So this is what my mom did. So she sewed four blocks together. We, all we did is add, we added a little sashing there in that little cornerstone. She, she skipped that and she just sewed the four blocks together. And here is the quilt as you go part. So she did, a, so here's a set of four and here's another set of four. She's doing it the opposite, opposite way that we're going to do it, but um, she's connecting it with a little sashing here. So she's sewing, um, well, here, so there's the sashing here. And then on the front, we're going to put ours on the back, but she has hers on the front. This is like a binding strip. So this is a piece of fabric that's folded in half and sewn right here and then flipped over and then she's hand stitching it on. So what she's doing is that binding strip, the raw edges are matched up with the raw edges of the um, finished um, quilt piece here and with the raw edges of this strip. So all those get sewn down and then the second square only gets sewn down to this one strip back here so that that binding looking strip will be like a flap here. Then that's folded over and stitched down. So if that made sense, that's the process that we will do once we have our things quilted. So one thing that my mom wanted uh, me to know about before, before I started quilting is that when, you, uh, when, you, uh, when we're making these big squares here, they all have to be the same size as each other. So my mom's is 12 and a half inches here, I think. Ours are going to be 13 inches because we added that half inch sashing. So all of them have to be cut to the 13 inches or 12 and a half in her case. But when you quilt, just like when we applique, sometimes it sucks in the fabric because, you know, we're making all these, these like little bunchings of fabric. So that can pull in the fabric which then you have the problem kind of like, like this. It got pulled in and then she has, uh, it's not big enough anymore, the uh, front of the quilt. So that's something that we're gonna have to look out for. Um, here's another spot. What she's gonna do is she's just gonna put a piece of fabric here and then fold it over and then she'll have, she'll be, just be covering up this edge with white. Um, but that's something that um, we need to look out for. She said that when she quilted this, uh, my mom just, I think she just laid the fabric onto the batting and started quilting. So it was moving and stretching. Um, so I think, so that's something we need to think about when, when we're working on ours. And I think maybe these pins might help keep everything in place, but I'm also wondering I don't know, I'm kind of wondering, should I sew along these sashing pieces first? Or I don't know, should I sew around these edges just to hold the edges down? But then at the same time, I'm not sure, you know, we kind of want it to stretch outward still. I don't know, it's something that we're gonna have to pay attention to, but um, at worst, we can just add an extra strip on here before we cut it all down, I think or cut it all down and then add, add that strip. Um, I think we're going to just have to start and see if we just come upon that as we go and see if we can come up with a solution. So, all right, let's quilt. I'm going to lift this up a little bit higher. So I will take any thoughts you guys have on, on quilting this. Um, we could quilt each individual as its own motif. 
or we could quilt all the way around as if there's no motifs, like an, an overall just swirl or something. And, or we could, uh, um, we could do like a feather that goes up into this white space and then do something else here or whatever. We can kind of do whatever we want. And the thing is, we could do something on this block and do something totally different on another block. So we should just kind of play around. Judy, you say base the edges. That's what you do on your long arm. You would sew the sashing from the center out. That's what I'm wondering, from the center out, because then it stretches it outward as we go. Um, spray base. Uh, we're not going to spray base. I already have it pinned. Yeah, I'm just wondering if I base it around the edge as if, if we go outward, if that's going to be a problem. I think we're just going to, we're going to have to try two. So let's, um, you like the idea of sewing the sash in first from the, I mean, we could start from the middle and sew the sashing out. Or just sew, just sew a, the sashing. If we did that, then we could probably remove our pins too. Uh, the problem with that is if we want to do an overall print, like going up in the middle here, then it'd be weird with, with sashing or with the sashing sewn down. So I don't know. You know what? I think we'll just try it a little bit as we go. I think for this first one, I'm going to take this pin out of the center. I think we're going to just kind of start in the center. Yeah. And like you said, Nolene, kind of work our way outward. And I think for this first one, I'm just kind of brainstorming this as I go. I kind of just want to fill in this white space. And you know what? I might just start with these um, swirls that go back and forth just because I really liked those when, um, when I did them for the Charming Chevron quilt. And it could fill in a lot of this white space all at once. And then we can focus in on what's going on in, in these little details a little bit more. It's really up for grabs. We can do whatever we want. So... Let's just get started. <laughs> no more thinking. Um, I am going to test test the machine. I just changed my needle and put the new foot on. It should be good to go, but I have a little spare piece of, let's even make this smaller, a little spare piece of batting and some spare thread, or not spare thread, spare um, fabric. I wanted to just test it just to make sure that our tent our, te our um, tension is fine and everything. So let's let's just give it a go so we can get started. All right, I got my um, my ruler foot on there. I don't really need the ruler foot, but I like I like this this um, free motion foot because it is a quarter inch uh, from the needle, so a quarter inch all the way around, which makes it awesome because then I can get measured on a, a quarter inch pretty well. All right, so I think. Man, you guys, it's been forever since since I did this. So we free motion quilt. I kind of learned how to free motion quilt on the Charming Chevrons quilt that we did a little while back. And this is, oh, and then I did that star quilt. That was my first quilting in the wild, quilting in, in real life um, project. That was just a quick project. I just did some swirls around it. And uh, um, so, man, I feel like I'm, quilting in the wild again. It's kind of odd. All right, so I got my threads here. Wow, I'm like remembering how to do it again. So all right, I got my little grippets too. I'm going to use those tonight. Uh, this is going to be, the grippets are going to be great for this size piece, this just 12 inch or 13 inch piece that we need to do. All right, I'm going to try and do these swirls. Wow, it feels like forever since I did this. Oh, it feels so good to do again, though. Oh, fun. Okay, I'm totally excited again now. Ah, okay. Love it. It just feels, just feels fun to do again. All right, let's, let's stop. Um, I think let's just crack lack it. I, I want to just check it out first, just to make sure that our tension is okay. I think the machine feels good. Oops, dropped my scissors. Um, the machine feels good. I, I, um, I oiled it and I put on the new foot. So, all right, let's, let's see how we did on the front here. So tension and the front looks a-okay. 
on the back. Oh, dang, I think we're ready to go here, people. We didn't need to practice. Let's get cracking. All right. All right. Now I'm in decision land again. <laughs> All right, let's just, let's just pull this in. Start somewhere, right? Wow, so many decisions. All right, let's, I think I'm gonna just start kind of here. Well, gotta start somewhere. I'm gonna start here and we'll, we'll just do a swirl down to the bottom and then we'll, it, the swirl can turn into something else up, up there. I know, cool, let's go. Don't overthink it. Exactly, Noli, and I'm, I'm, I'm having an issue here. Overthinking issue. I'm gonna, oh, I started really random here. Well, fine. Needle's already down. Let's just start in this totally random spot. I'm just getting the thread up from the bottom. I should have at least started on a seam, but oh well, we're starting here at the end. Um, oh, where's my little stiletto? Need to get this little, the bottom thread up. There we go. Oh no, I'm st starting a little off the center and then I'm gonna go down through the center. All right, let's get the grippets out. Wow, I'm all nervous now. All right, so I'm gonna just do that little ribbon all the way kind of throughout here, all the way down. And then we'll, we'll just see what happens from there. <laughs> I'm going to stop, readjust. These are kind of funny little ribbons. They kind of go up a little, but I think they're kind of cute. <laughs> you know, we're not going to overthink this. I'm going to, I'm going to swing down here with this ribbon now. For no particular reason. <laughs> All right, we're getting crazy now. Already going without thinking ahead. We're turning this swirl into like a little leafy thing. Now we're gonna just echo in here. <laughs> I'm basically just filling in the white area with Crazy Town right now. It's just fun to be moving on on uh, the um, moving with the free motion again. This is a good warm up piece. Just do whatever, right? Let's think again. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just show you guys what I got going on right here because it's a pile of crazy, but that's perfectly fine. We are just playing around and it is fun to just play with this little little, little segment of quilt. <laughs> it's so crazy over here. But I like just these little swirls. I think they're fun. It got a little thick here, so it didn't, um, it didn't work. I got a little bloopy, but that's okay. Oh, you, your grippets are coming on Friday. That's awesome, Laurie. Excited to hear about that. You like graffiti quilting? Hey, that's perfect. That's what we're doing here, Robin. That's a great way to say this. This is this is graffiti quilting. So, all right, we need to come up with something. Um, well, I don't need this pin over. I got a. I have a little pin over here now. I think we can remove that. 
Should I just stick with the white for now and then we can come back and think through this? I don't even think I'm going to think that far ahead. I, I'm going to um, I'm going to remove this pin. Then we can get right to the edge here. And you know what? I just really like these ribbons. Maybe I'll go ribbon up the side here. We'll ribbon. We'll like do some weird transition ribbon and go up the edge. And uh, maybe we'll come back down and do whatever we want in there. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're still ready to go here, I think. I'm running out of fabric here. I wonder if it's... I wonder if we should rotate the fabric, but no, nah, I don't think so. Let's, let's stay here. All right, this next time I'm gonna come up and start another one. I think. Okay, so right now I'm kind of suspecting that I'm bunching this up a little bit. I think I really got to get the grip it right in here. Actually, you know what? I might get the glove for for that side so I can get my fingers right in there. Yeah, exactly, Nolene. I was more restricted. With the chevron quilt, I was just working in a really small space. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just fun to be moving this around again. I have quite the seam here that it's trying to jump over. <laughs> oh, this is just a crazy mess, but I like it. I'm definitely noticing this time more so than on the chevron quilt that when I get really bulky seams like right here, it doesn't want to roll over that seam as well. Um, so that's something that I'm going to have to keep my eye out for as we go. I'm kind of leaving a quarter inch here because we're going to lose a quarter inch. All right. I do like this little swirl. <laughs> There's something just happy about it. Um, all right, let's, let's finish. Let's go up to the top here. Okay. So in theory, we're going to the top of, of of this. So now let's let's come down here and do something. So what should we try there? We could just do some like point to point stuff. Oh, we could use the ruler too. We could use our our um, grip it as our as our ruler. We could just like cut right through these these um, little uh, um, flying um, geese here, or we could. We could trace around them. That would be something. Yeah, there's so many choices. Dot to dot. So yeah, so we could go, we could get to here. Like I could just, I could just um, sew straight over here. That part will get cut off and we could just, we could go like bloop. We could do like that three bit, but then we're stuck at the top again. How do we get here then? Oh, we could just, well, no, that won't work either. How about three loops in each triangle, longer one in the middle. So like, do, 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 and then what? How do we get to the next one? This is the, this is always what's going on in my head for free motion quilting is how do we get in and out of things? That's, that's the trick for me. So how about three loops in each triangle, longer one in the middle? When in doubt, echo, echo, echo. That's a good point. Oh, we could do that thing where we do like an S going down one way, and then we do that S coming back the other way. Okay, that's the start of a plan. All right, we're starting there. So first I'm gonna get to the center. I'm just gonna travel over to there. This part will get ultimately cut off. All right, we're gonna try doing that S to this center, and then an S to this center, to this center, and then down to the other center, and then we're gonna come back up, and it'll look like we'll have like little, um, little like orange, those orange peels almost. So let's let's give that a go.
Man, all those quilters that can make all these good choices and have all these pretty quilts. That's some neat stuff that they're doing. All right, now let's go, let's go back up. So it's going to look like we have these kind of like little leaves in the center here. All right, so that's a start. We got, that's a something, right? <laughs> so we just have these, these little like leafies going right down the middle. That's kind of cool. What else can we do? And still get down and back. We could do other ones. We could do some on the outside. Let's see, bloop, 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 bloop. That would get us all the way around and then we could come back up to the top. How about that? Let's do that. Make smaller ones on each side. Like half ones? The question is how do I, oh, I could go like here, then here, and then hit the next one. Oh, yay, okay, so that'll get us down, down and up. Okay, got it. Um, we're gonna do, we're gonna go like this to this corner and then bloop to the center here. And then we're gonna keep traveling down um, to the bottom and then we should be able to do the same thing back up. Okay, that's, that's the plan. And that might be enough. I don't think we need a quilt in here. Um, we'll end up back at the top here. Yeah, and then we can travel over here and do something else. All right, it's a plan. I like a plan. Okay, so we're going to this corner. And now we're going to the, like, the center. And then next corner. Oh, this is gonna be cute. I like it already. All right, I'm hoping to, uh, we're putting, we're putting the free motion quilting into practice now in real life. So this is, this quilt's gonna be a challenge for me, but look, we're just working with this small little piece of fabric. It's like a practice quilt almost, but it's gonna turn into a real quilt when we're done and that's pretty exciting. All right, now we're gonna go back up. Oh, it's pretty, it's fancy. Wow, I can really tell the different layers of fabric. And that's actually making me think that maybe I should raise my, my foot a little bit. And I think I might do that once I get back to the top. Because my foot seems to be pushing the fabric, you know, little places where I haven't pressed enough or it's pushing that around a little bit. Yeah, I feel super fancy with, with these, these uh, triangles all of a sudden. Don't you think? They got fancy on me. I like it. Wonder what the back, ooh, it's gonna be so fun looking at the back, but we'll do that when we're done. Um, I, I can for sure tell that I'm pushing fabric. Like I, I, I really should push outward, start even more from the middle and only work from the middle out because even going around and doing this side first, I feel like I've been pulling the fabric this way, but you know what? We're gonna just deal what we end up with and that'll be fine. So I'm gonna leave the rest of these squares so those will kind of pop on their own, hopefully. Um, let's, let's travel to here and maybe I'll try and connect up with this swirl and then we can start doing something with this bowl or something. Yep, that's gonna be the plan, I think. Or we could try something. You know what, I think I'm gonna do a little feather coming down in here just because I like the feathers a lot. So let's think that through. Yeah, let's stick to the swirls. All right, I'm gonna travel. Let's, let's remove, let's remove this guy. We'll travel over there and then we'll do the rest of those swirls and I'll try and connect it back to up, up to here, which is probably a silly idea, but that's what we're doing. We're gonna go to about there. Oh, I was gonna I was gonna move the foot, but oh well I forgot. 
Alright, am I gonna make it back to this thing? I don't know. Alright, that's kind of back to where we started. <laughs> Alright, let's let's move on to this bowl. Oh, Sandra! Sandra, I, I'm I'm with you. Don't forget to breathe. I'm totally not breathing. You're completely right. Okay. The bowl. What should we do here? Medium pebbles or different bubbles for the bowl. That would be kind of neat for, for this bowl. Let's see, should we do that in the bowl here? And then maybe a back and okay, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a bunch of pebbles in the bowl. And then I'm gonna do just a, like a wavy squiggle for um, this piece up here, the, the rim of the bowl. And then let's just maybe outline, let's outline our, our, our fruit up here and then maybe just echo a little bit. Okay, planned enough. That's, that's a good enough plan for this area. I'm gonna actually switch do the um, grip it on this side and the glove on this side because I don't have a lot to grab on over here anymore. All right, I'm going to travel right in here. We're going to leave this swirl as is. and A bunch of pebbles. They're kind of pebble swirls. You know, the nice thing is that I'm using this very neutral thread, so I feel like um, my mistakes will be totally hidden, <laughs> which is nice. Because I'm sure I'm going to be all over the place, but it's kind of fun. It's freeing to have some invisible. Oh, I'm just using the, Tracy, I was using both grippets, but I'm getting towards the end here. And actually I could probably use, it's it's harder on this side because I have the machine here, but you're right, here I could use the grippet. Let's just keep using it. You know what, while I'm here, let's get rid of this guy. He's my way. I like that, ca that idea, Catherine. Um, and we might do that for one of these blocks. Right now I'm just getting into the mode of free motion quilting again. But you're right, it'd be fun to do uh, where, where we get some plexiglass. And you can lay plexiglass over your whole piece. And you can actually, with a dry erase marker, try your design out. You can try different designs and once you get something you like, you can kind of mimic what's on your plexiglass. That'd be something I'd, I'd love to try. I've never done that before, and it would just be neat to to see um, what we can come up with that way. Like a all over, like neat motif where it's like a super designed motif, you know? Not just all wackadoodle land, which is where I'm at now. All right, but we, we sort of swirl pebbled in there. <laughs> I think, I think we're good. Yeah, I think you're right, Nolene. This thread is the perfect choice. It's totally invisible. All right, so I'm going to just do a little up and down um, wave here, I suppose. Not a wave, but like a just an up and down motion. Just to be a little bit different than the, than the um, pebbles. So we are kind of treating the motif as the star a little bit still. Like we're, you know, we're actually looking at what our pieced block is and using that to help make us make quilting decisions. I could just go over this whole thing with the same design if we wanted to, but like an all over quilt. Okay, I'm tempted to just kind of go around these, but I do kind of want to hit these inside ones. So what I think I'll do is I, I think I'll just travel. Maybe I should just travel this whole way. Like I could travel. Nah, I'm going to travel to here, go on the outside and then kind of come down. 
and then we're just going to backtrack a little. I want to kind of, ooh, and we'll echo around here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. All right, plan. But now I am going to actually raise my foot a little bit. I think it's a little low. I want it to hover, hover over the quilt a little bit more because it keeps getting caught. So I think we're good there. Does one of your earlier videos tell us the quilt as you go? Tracy, no, we're not that far yet. Um, I will be doing that. I'm going to snip these while I'm here. I'm going to be doing that after we get these first two, two blocks done. So I just have, uh, you know, we, we need two quilted blocks before we can do, um, before we can do the quilt as you go technique. So that's, that's where, where we're at now. I'm trying to get those two quilted blocks done. All right, I'm definitely floating over the top a little bit more. Um, I think we're going to travel down here. Backtrack around this circle. I mostly just want these circles to kind of pop on the on the back of the quilt. So I'm going to travel back up, which I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I think I changed the path that I was going to go to. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, I totally did this weird, but that's okay. I'm going to go back up here. Cuz I didn't I didn't do this yet. Now I need to get over here. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I'm going to just start kind of echoing, we'll just start echoing here. Which means I'm just going to go kind of around and around. Except for I'm going to stop and... Oh yeah, I guess I just kind of want to echo around here. A little leaf shape. A little bloop for the stem. Yeah, and then we'll finish tracing our circle here. All right, now let's just echo around these shapes a little bit more, hopefully ending up down here. Oh man, I keep saying echo and the, the Amazon Alexa is talking, we had to change, we had to change it to be echo instead of Alexa because, ooh, I got a pin to take out, because my name, Alyssa, is a little too close to Alexa, so whenever anyone said Alyssa, the Alexa would start start talking. So we named it, so we changed it to Echo. I think it can only be Alexa, Echo, or Computer. And we have computers, so we do computer stuff all the time. So that wasn't going to work. Um, so Echo it is, but that's not a perfect world either. Oh, this is kind of cute. All right, I'm going to bump back up around this way, and that's going to be it. I'm going to... Well, let's let's try and fill in this little space here. Maybe we can make something leafy looking. Echo that a little bit. There we go. And and up down here. All right. Done. Now we got to figure out what to do down here. Maybe some more swirls. We did swirls everywhere else. Let's just let's get past this bowl part and let's swirl it up to here and then we're to kind of this flower where we could do some more like point to point stuff I think so all right swirling down to the flower that's the next plan man you guys we're almost done with this block I think we're gonna get this block done um, tonight yet which will be great then we can do Tuesday we can do our next one that means Wednesday we could be doing quilt as you go the quilt as you go stuff which would be awesome Okay, we're doing the teeniest little squiggles. Ooh, we still have to get this all folded up in the neck. Okay. 
Okay. All right, we're just going to loop down into here. All right, now we need to make decisions again. Oh, so uh, Tracy, this whole process is kind of quilt as you go. What, are, what we're doing now is we're taking small blocks, smaller than a full quilt, we're taking smaller blocks and doing the whole quilting of them. So we have the, the front, the batting, and the back just of a smaller portion of our full quilt. So once we have two of those done, then we can do the attachment. So this whole process is quilt as you go, but we're, we're just not at the part where we're doing the attachment. So like, here's my mom's. She's already done the attachment. So here's her two, here's her block of four, and here's her other block of four, and then she did her attachment on both sides here. That's the kind of magic trick of it all. Right now we're just at the, um, at the stage that we are, uh, we, have, we need quilted blocks first and that's what, that's what we're getting at. Oh, thanks Jennifer. I still, I'm having issues just knowing where to go next, but uh, we'll get there. So I was thinking here we could do just like three big of those teardroppy things, like what we did on the, on the, um, those uh, flying geese up there. So I'm thinking we could travel. I think maybe let's go in the middle and let's treat this as like a rounded, rounded shape. We can even cross over a little bit. Yeah, okay. I got a plan. Ooh, we could even have a rounded base maybe even. Okay. I got to draw the shapes out in my head. So... I'm going to start... We're going to just travel down this seam... I'm going to start kind of right in the middle here. All right, we're going to we're going to go a swoop up. So we'll 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 I'm going to go the other direction, but I'm going to swoop up and go to the point and then swoop back down and kind of come around like a rounded bottom and then go back up to the other point and then to the other point. I think that's that is the plan. And that's all we'll do. We won't fill it in. We'll, and maybe we'll do that for the leaves too. That might be I'm sure that's plenty quilting. Kind of touching the edges and getting up to this point. We're kind of rounding off our little tulip a little bit, I think, actually. It's kind of a way of thinking about it. And then I'm going to kind of go to this side and then I'm going to come around. And now we're going to hit up the center one. Oh, this is going to be cute! Okay, to that point. And now we're going to kind of how did we do that? We came down and around here. And then I kind of like this little crossover that happens. All right, now we're going to aim for this corner. And then we'll get back to here. But then we got to figure out where to go next. Oh, I think this is just right. Oh, I love it. Okay. That's all I'm going to do for this. Just these two little, these three little bloops. This kind of comes around to the base again. Okay. So now we're back to the bottom. I think we should probably do something similar with these, these leaves. We could kind of give it a stem. Why don't we do that since we're right in the middle here? Let's remove this. You know, I can, I can actually turn my block when it's this small. Let's... Let's give it a stem. I don't know how to get out of the stem yet. We'll give it a stem and then we'll go back up. Maybe one, well, I don't know, let's just go. We're gonna come back up, give it some thickness. And now we're just gonna come back around and now we're in the center. So, all right, now we'll do those leafies. Actually, I think let's get down to here and I'll do a leaf. Then we'll kind of cross over to the other side.
And I gotta remember it to leave like a quarter inch on the side, otherwise you're not gonna see this. Okay, other side. I can use my foot as a guide for the center. Oh, but now we're way in this corner and we need to get somewhere else. So let's, let's, uh, I'm going to look this up a little bit for you guys. All right. So we still have to get, here we are so far. Oh, that's cool. And we got some weird spacing in here. Really, we should probably go back in and maybe try and add a little bit of spacing. Maybe we will. So, um, I need to get from here over to here. I suppose I can just travel along the bottom and then we can go and add more swirls, those squiggles. Then what? Should we just maybe go do a square here? Or we could come into here, do a square. But I'd like to come out this side. Ah, let's, let's get over there first. All right. Go to the edge and travel. Holly, I think that is exactly the right answer. Hold on, let me, you guys are getting unscrewed here a little bit. All right, so we'll just travel back down here. And let's, let's straighten out here again. All right, I'm going to go to the edge and then we'll start swirling again. So this edge will get cut off, so that's not going to matter. All right, we're to this point now. Let's remove a pin. I think we're going to swirl, but I think I'm going to rotate this a little bit, so I'm going in this direction. OK. I think I'm going to travel to here and then we'll start our squiggles back and forth. I'd like to come out here so I can kind of fill in some of these spaces and then we'll be done. I just got to figure out what I want to do with these circles. Sorry, I'm missing a little bit of a conversation today, you guys, just because I'm like deep in it here. Okay, I'm gonna get back into it here. Got to concentrate. little baby ones, which are kind of fun. It is kind of fun to just fill these spaces with swirls. All right, before I get too far, let's get rid of this last pin. Ooh, I can tell my machines are working hard. I can smell the, uh-oh. We lost our, our thread broke just there. Oh no. All right. Spoke too soon here. Oh, weird. Yeah, our thread just totally broke. Huh. Let's just snip that. 
Well, now we have the opportunity to do we want to continue where we are here? <laughs> I suppose we could. Did I get caught on something? Hmm. Tension feels okay. I don't know. Just broke. I'm going to actually re-thread this. It feels a little, maybe a little tight. Jennifer, I didn't hear, I didn't see what happened, but it does not sound, it does not sound good. Sending some sparkles your way then. All right, let's re-thread. Gotta thread it through there too. Oh man, Jennifer, I'm really sorry to hear that. That's that's no good. Sparkles! Sending you sparkles. All right, I'm just going in where, where I left off. Maybe treat the block in the center as a cathedral window. Ooh, like that! Wait. Oh, you mean like bloops this way? Let's think about that. All right, I'm gonna end up up here, but I could trace down to here. You know what, I could go around, I could bump around these circles all the way around. And then, yeah, I could come in here and do like a fun circle thing. You know, I could start tracing, go fill in these spaces and come back and then finish tracing. I might do that. We might get there in a really odd, odd way. So, all right, let's, I think, I think I'm ready to go here. Did I bring this, my thread up yet? No, I didn't. Did I? Oh, I didn't. Dang. Okay, let's do that. And I probably did a stitch already here. Oh, well. Come on, thread. There we go. Yeah, I don't know how I'd feel in your place, Jennifer. That's just the worst. Get rid of these. So I think I am. I'm going to travel around the outside to here. And then we'll do, I don't know. Some little echoing weirdness, maybe some little um, just swirls and we're going to go up into here and then we're going to get ourselves back here and then finish up here. We'll see how that goes. That might be a horrible idea, but we're doing it. So, all right. We're going to just track around these circles. I'm sure they'll look nothing like circles on the back. All right, now we'll swirl our way in and out of here just to fill this space.
is maybe super silly that we did this, but we're doing it. Filled in a weird space a little bit. I think it's a little less visually weird. Echo around the leafish design. Oh, like here? Let's get around these circles yet. Oh yeah, those leaves, I could have done that. Wow, these circles are gonna be crazy. But they'll be poofy, that'll be fun. Since we're stitching around them, they're poofing up a little bit. So let's... Yeah, I think we're gonna come in here. And I think I'm gonna, yeah, do the leaf shapes in the other direction. Let's, we'll follow the inside first and then we'll do the outside second. So I'm just gonna kinda echo these shapes first. Oh, that one got a little wonky. <laughs> I started thinking about something and then I got way, way off. Yeah, exactly. There's, well, yeah, and like I said, this is my first one and this is a, we have a whole opportunity to practice a whole pile of these as we go. And this just got wacky, but it is what it is. <laughs> That's a wonky circle. So we're just gonna plain stop it right here. Let's see what we got and call it a day, I think. <laughs> the whole thing is quilted, that's what, that's what matters. So let me just get these threads. Snip the front and back real quick and then let's check this, check this guy out. Okay. <laughs> we officially have one block quilted. Oh, here, you guys are falling, sorry, here we go. Okay, so there we are. I'm gonna get a little taller. All right, so this is what it looks like from the front. I do actually like, you know what? Here's the thing. If I like at least one area on this, then it's progress. I really like how we did these tulips and I really like how we did these little, um, these guys in here. I really think those are cool. Um, and I, I, I like these big loops like this. So let's, let's peek at the back. Oh, it's fun. I like it. Oh, look how pretty this turned out. Oh man, loving the freaking tulip. That looks awesome. Okay, love it. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of a neat example though. So we did really open areas here and with really dense stuff around it. And that really kind of defined defined that leaf or the, the tulip quite a bit. So I'm digging that. We'll try with that a little bit more. I mean, these shapes are totally awkward, but um, again, I do like the open space with the dents around it. I think, I think that might be a look. And these, I just think turned out so pretty too. So there's stuff, stuff that I like in here. And you know what? Like I said, I haven't done this for a while. This is a great warm up one. Loving it. Um, I'm using Oral, Orofil 50 weight. And I think it's it, muslin. I think the color is called muslin, which is perfect. It blends into all our stuff. Um, let's see. I don't think I'll trim this now. I think I'll leave this uh, just because it's, it's time already too. Um, and then tomorrow we'll do this second one. And then tomorrow we'll trim both. So tomorrow, tomorrow we'll completely quilt this, assuming it goes like it did today, relatively quick. And then we will trim them both. I think mine will be 13 inches. And then on Wednesday, we will do the first connection. We will connect these two together using the quilt as you go technique. We do have to cut some fabric for that, but uh, yeah, by this week, by, by New Black Thursday, we will have two segments together, just like my mom's. So here's, here's my mom's again. So here's one of those connecting, connecting segments. So that's what I want to do um, on Wednesday. So yay, I'm very happy with this progress. I'm excited to get free motion quilting again. 
I'll have to have this in the back of my head to figure out what we want to do with this one. We have another one of these flowers, so we could kind of trace that again. That'd be kind of fun. That's tomorrow's job. So awesome, guys. I'm going to flip you around, and we will call it an evening here. Hello. I'm so happy to be quilting again, you guys. Hold on. We are falling all over the place here. Well, luckily, we're just about done here. Um, here we go quilted everything looks so much more finished at each step so like i don't know it got fancy all of a sudden didn't it here's the back again i think that just is really fun this is a crazy quilt one for sure graffiti quilting i, I like that term <laughs> our funny circles up here but the echoing around it that's kind of neat more echoing we gotta do more more echoing and more dot to dot points that's that, that's what tomorrow's gonna be, echoing and dot to dot. I just, those like swirls where they meet and cross, I, I really like how that's looking. So, all right, thanks again, guys. I am going to get this up on YouTube on to Penguin and Fish movies, and we will do some more quilting tomorrow. So quilting and then trimming to prep for the uh, quilt as you go connecting pieces. That'll be fun. Uh, so that'll be Wednesday. So thanks again. Have a fabulous start to your week, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Good night.